Sunday. It's Sunday morning. I love morning. The games are over, and we're breaking it all down. This is your Morning After Podcast. With all the insight and analysis on the Utes, Cougars, and Aggies. The Morning After Podcast with Hans, Scotty, and Lloyd Cole begins right now. And he gave us an opportunity to come in here and show what we're made of. On 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. All right, welcome in. It's another edition of the Morning After Podcast. Hans Olsen, Scott Gerard, Lloyd Cole. Let's get to it, folks. we got a lot to break down. Hans, you made it back from Laramie. You all good to go? Yeah, that's actually a drive. I'm in Cheyenne. Oh, so are you? I, I went from, yeah, I went from Laramie. We actually nobody likes to be in Laramie. here in Cheyenne. So. Nobody wants to be in Laramie. Um we made some bad choices on some Mexican food last night, and <laughs> my guts have been inside out. I feel like I ate like a gopher off the side of a road that you, was undercooked. You and probably did. I just, yeah, could have very that well was the been pork. That was the gopher. pork in the chili verde. <laughs> oh, my gosh. A bloated antelope that they scooped off the road <laughs> and threw into a burrito. Okay, and stop. I, it, just, it was a poor choice. <laughs> no, it was a poor choice. And, but we did get a place back here in Cheyenne, so we've uh, we've just woken up. We've thrown the equipment on, and here we go. All right, let's get to it. Uh, let's start with uh, the Utah-Utah State game. Um, I had the call. Lloyd, I know you did the pre and post on 97.5. Uh, fun game, Hans. Uh, I don't know how much you were able to dial in and keep close tabs on this one, but Utah State jumps out to a 14-3 to lead. Utah has a couple second-quarter touchdowns to uh, take the lead, and then they push the lead up a little bit, and uh, they lead by 14, 28-14, and Utah State goes down, scores a touchdown, and then intercepts Isaac Wilson, and they have a chance to tie the game up. And... Um, they uh, end up missing a field goal after a false start and after a bad snap and uh, all kinds of issues on a drive where it was there for the taking to try to really create some drama. Utah then uh, off the missed field goal, uh, Makai Bernard goes 64 yards on the next play down inside the 10-yard line. Utah still stalls out a little bit at the one-yard line. They go for it on fourth and one. And, boy, Isaac Wilson overthrows Carson Ryan. I'm in the booth thinking this is incomplete, and Utah State just got the stop. But Carson Ryan, who had not had a single reception all season, puts his left paw up and reels in a really dramatic one-handed catch. That gives Utah the two-touchdown lead and end up winning by 17. But I'm telling you, it was a fun game. And uh, that's, I think, uh, what all I wanted was to have a little bit of drama in the fourth quarter, and, and we had it. And by the way, the Sultan of Swine absolutely delivered. Like he, like he had, he had one of those games. Where, like it was just what you expected from, you know, from him. He came out and he he he's, he's came out slinging it, uh, and he was he was effective with a uh, with run. And by the way, Russell Faison is a beast. I'm glad you got finally got a chance to really see him up close and in person. That guy, oh my lord, how did? The, the 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 broadcasters were were joking about were talking about how you know they've been trying to motivate the team uh, by you know with all these guys saying hey these guys overlooked you we you know we 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 took you guys so let's let's go get these guys I'm like man how how did that guy you know not go to it that guy's that guy is an absolute beast I mean wow that, that guy, that you're guy, saying why did he go to Utah State yeah. huh that's what you're saying yeah uh, you know what I am saying it actually because he is really really good. Uh, so watch out for that guy. Um, I mean, the fact that he was able to do what he did against that this Utah defense was was well, impressive. Well, I will uh, I will I'll also say that uh, a lot of credit goes to that offensive line. And I don't know if you can award a who low hands in a loss, uh, but Teague Anderson played his butt off against Logan Fano and Van Fillinger. And as the game went on, those guys ended up doing their thing a little bit. But for the first three quarters, um, I thought uh, I, I thought Teague Anderson was incredible uh, in how he was able to my boy. to to handle himself against some of the better defensive linemen in all of college football. 
Uh, but Rasul Faison does not take a snap off. He goes wire to wire, and they played him like crazy. His dad mm-hmm. came in. Um, his dad has never seen him play a college football game. Never seen him play once because uh, he's back in uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, so they surprised him a bit. They flew him out, and uh, and so his dad was able to watch him play, and he, that kid was extra motivated, and, boy, he played just an incredible game yesterday. Uh, 100 and nearly 20 oh, yards yeah. rushing, a six-yard average. And uh, conversely, too, now this is, you know, Obviously, it's part of the total, but if you take that 64-yard run away from Makai Bernard, Utah State holds Utah to 3.9 yards per carry. But it's that one play, when you let up for just a moment, that really uh, broke the back of Utah State. And it was another game hands where, where those so just – Tell me, it, tell me about ahead. this stiff arm. I want to know more about this <laughs> stiff arm that Makai Bernard had. Scotty, you were there in the box. I, the TV view of it was, I mean, he took he took out one guy, and and then he took out another guy, which made him take out another guy. Uh, the stiff arm was brutal. Yeah, I um, I was mean, that on the sixty four yard. Was that on or? the sixty four yard? Yes, run? that was on the sixty four yarder. Okay, because I'm was, up I'm up high, and I don't see a lot of replays, so you probably he, had a better view of it than I did. Yeah, he he was going along the side. He, he stiff armed one guy, and it was able to get by him. And then he another guy was coming to the side of him, and he gave him he sh- essentially shoved him into another guy, which took out t- uh, another defender. Like it was, <laughs> it was a it was a man's run hands. It really was. Hmm. So but it, you're right. Like so that, does that seal the conversation, or it? Sh- you know who also ran pretty well? Uh, Mike Mitchell. Mike Mitchell ran yeah. really well. But yeah. but but Mike Mackay Bernard is your, he's your he has to be your one. Like he should be he should be your back. I think there's still some questions on that offensive line. There really is because I mean Scotty's right. It, they they really weren't able to do a whole lot for for a lot of the game. It was that 64 yard run that really that really opened up, uh, opened it up for him. And I mean, essentially, you know, they, I mean, they, they ended up rushing for 221 yards, I get, you know, uh, Utah did. So, so they got the job done, but like he should be, he probably should be your bell cow. Yeah. And that came on 41 carries. Um, and, uh, Isaac Wilson settled in, um, the first quarter. I think that he was really, really jumpy and then kind of settled in, in the second and third quarter. Um, but a lot of it was because Andy Ludwig just put him in really good situations. Andy Ludwig put on a master class in play calling yesterday in saying, okay, Isaac Wilson's not in a good place right now, so let's really focus on running the football, and then let's focus on putting out um, you know, a route, routes that he can throw and throw easily. And he got his confidence going, and then they started to push the ball down the field a little bit. But – there's still some work to do with Isaac, but I think there was enough there to see that uh, he made a couple of throws on some uh, corner routes that was just like, yeesh, just incredible throws. So you see why everybody in the country wanted this kid, um, but he still has a little ways to go. But uh, but he made some – there was some – there was two or three throws where my jaw just dropped. I was like, wow, mm. that's incredible. Into bracket coverage on a corner route a couple of times. Um, so there was a lot, if I'm Utah, there's a lot of good things, but there's also some things that make me a little worried too. I'm curious on the two interceptions. I want to know more about Cameron Calhoun and, and then Smith Snowden's interception. Um, Smith Snowden's interception was as good of a pick as you'll ever see. And that's the, okay, that's the other thing in this game too, that, uh, I know Lloyd's, uh, bowing down to the, uh, to the pig, uh, pig farmer. Um, he, uh. He made a couple of bad decisions. Now, the first interception that Smith Snowden had, um, Utah State was going in. It was the first drive of the game or second drive of the game, I want to say. And uh, he's looking for Kyrese White and has him open. The ball's a little underthrown into the middle of the field. And Kyrese comes in, looks like he has it. In fact, I call it a touchdown because I think Kyrese White grabs it. Well, while he's in the process of catching it, Smith Snowden comes in and essentially rips the ball away from him while he's trying to catch it and then rolls to his side to kind of get separation. 
and comes away with a pick. It was that one I don't necessarily put on Bryson. It's a little bit, but Kyrie's has got to be a little bit more aggressive in attacking that football. And then the second interception, uh, just way underthrown, got a little greedy, yep. was feeling like he was really dialing in and uh, got a little greedy, and Calhoun just high-pointed it on an underthrown ball and, and ripped it down. Um, Utah State had four Five, if you include late in the game where they're just trying to score some points late with, you know, under a minute left. So I don't count that fifth one, but they had four meaningful possessions that were empty possessions inside the 35-yard line of Utah. Two interceptions and two missed field goals. Um, And so that's the thing. Utah State was able to move the ball up and down the field, but those drives, those four drives that got inside the Utah 35, I know a lot of times we talk about empty possessions in the red zone, but we're talking about four empty possessions inside the 35-yard line. And uh, and had they been able to cash those in with one touchdown and three field goals or two touchdowns and two field goals, uh, obviously this is a much, much different game in terms of the kind of drama we had in the fourth quarter. Last week it was Cole Becker that was that was the the big question mark. He came in and made a couple field goals. This week it was, uh, as far as this game is concerned, it was Nimrod. Nimrod had two missed field goals. Um, now, mm. let me ask you this, Lloyd. On that first missed field goal, uh, the Utah uh, staff, SID staff, they they want it listed as a as a block field goal. Um, and then the Utah State people say, no, he just missed it. So I don't know officially how it's listed. Caleb Lohner came close to getting a finger on that one. So I don't know if you saw a better view on the TV, whether it was blocked or not. Or it looked got weird, a finger on it. It looked weird, but I didn't think it was blocked. Okay. I didn't think it was blocked. It looked, it looked, it came out like kind of, kind of like a knuckleball, it looked like. But I think it was a miss. I don't, I don't believe it was yeah. tipped. I know the announcers didn't say anything about it. I, I don't believe they said anything about it being, uh, being tipped. It just looked like a really bad miss. And then what did he do in the second one? Because he, he missed it that way, he pushed it. Yep. Uh, Sent it the other way. Um, guys, I, I want to know, how did linebacker depth look without Kearney Reed? Uh, I wasn't overly impressed, honestly. Um, I think that that's a big concern. And I think I only called Lander Barton's name once in that game yeah. yesterday. Yeah, he uh, – it was not uh, – it didn't look great. I mean, Lander Barton ended up having five total tackles. You're, you're leading you're, – by the way, Van Fillinger continues to be an absolute yeah. Van, uh, Van nightmare. Was a, especially in the fourth quarter, Van was really good. Dude had two pass breakups. He had a QB hurry. Uh, I mean, he had eight tackles, a half sack. Um, I was surprised that they – they weren't able to get the, and maybe it's a little bit of, you know, Bryson's a little bit elusive. They threw him off a little bit with that, that, that those read options. and But they only got two sacks. They only got two. They didn't really, I mean, I know they got a little bit of pressure on him, but it, but I was I thought they were going to be able to get a little bit more pressure on, and, on Bryson. Well, and once, and both sacks, one was on a uh, on a bad snap on a shotgun yep. that Bryson had to go down and, and pick Tafuna up. And Tafuna shot out of a cannon to get him. Yeah, and so and Tafuna gets the sack there, but that probably doesn't happen if it's a if it's a good snap. And then the other sack came late in the game when it was uh, Conover in the game on that last last drive. So there weren't a lot of meaningful sacks that were just I beat my guy and just destroyed you in the backfield. You said Tafuna, or was that Tonavasa that got that? They came uh, through and got that sack. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm now I'm trying to – no, it was Tonavasa, sorry. Yeah. No, it was Tonavasa, not Tafuna. So tell me a little bit more about Jonathan Hall. Just I, I'm trying to figure out – because, you know, when you're getting into Big 12 play, like, I don't know what Karini Reed's situation is. Well, he but said he's not going to miss too much time. So okay. I, uh, I, I think – but I, I think, think he's in the back. I don't know about that. No, I think I think there might be. I think he's dealing with a. Uh, I think he's dealing with a high ankle sprain, and I think it's going to be a couple more weeks. Okay, so if that's the case, it, we just take a look around the Big Twelve, and maybe we could do that at the back end of the podcast. But there's going to be a, a lot of power run, and there are some really good teams. I think Kansas State is a really good team. I think Central Florida is a really good team. I think TCU is tough. Yeah. So there's a lot of good teams with good running backs, and you're going to have to have good linebackers. 
play. So we need to know how long Kearney reads out. Can Jonathan Hall or can these other linebackers, can they carry the weight? Because – Rajul Faison is going for 120 yards on you. Now, it is Logan, and he was motivated, and I think Utah State's offensive line is underrated. I do. I think they're, I think they're solid. I think they've yep. got a lot of dogs on it. But it's, this conference is going to be tough, so you need to make sure that that linebacker depth is ready. And they could have taken – They might. Have, by the way, they might have taken – and maybe he'll be back. Uh, I don't know. It, it, maybe you know if he came back in the game, Scotty, but uh, – Elijah Davis, Scooby Davis, he he took a he went to try to cut down uh, Faison yeah. and took a knee to the head and he came up wobbling mm. and falling onto his face. I like, don't think he came back. No, I, yeah, I don't think he came back. So you might be down. By the way, we you know Morgan wasn't. All, he's like, oh, you know, we start losing a couple more, then we got a problem. Well, you might have another one that, that that's in uh, concussion protocol and he might not be. Who knows if he's gonna be ready for Oklahoma State? Uh, I'm. It, to answer your question, Hans, I'm really concerned, uh, and uh, I, I think that I think that the University of Utah has got some concerns there, big time, uh, in terms of linebacker and in terms of run support. Now, look, I when you add up all the numbers, Utah State had 4.1 yards a carry, 34 carries, 140 yards, but a lot of that was stopped on quarterback play, and and some of that, you know, some of the you know some of those plays that brought that average down but when you look at Faison and what he did and and that offensive line and Faison goes for 6.1 yards a carry and by the way how about Faison with 6.3 yards a carry against USC and 6.1 against Utah um oh boy they uh when you look at what he was able to do and what that offensive line was able to do um and you're going to go into the Big 12 that is as you mentioned loaded with running backs and loaded with big physical offensive lines, um, I think that there could very well be a cause for concern. And it might be me nitpicking like we talk about sometimes. We nitpick extensively when it comes to a team that we have high expectations for. But I think there's plenty to nitpick about uh, about that run defense right now. Hmm. Well, I can't ex- – you know, I was just taking a look at some of the numbers and I was looking at the, re- the receptions – and it feels like pretty much every one of the tight ends got a pass in this in this game. Yeah, you had you had Loner who got a touchdown early. He was in that. Uh, I think it might have been the touchdown that helped give them a seventeen fourteen lead. Uh, and then yeah, Carson Ryan, which still I you, you were spot on, Scotty. I, I have that. There was no way that he was going to catch that. As soon as I saw that thing, that ball leave his hand, I was like, well, okay, that's that's a missed opportunity. He was wide open. Uh, and by the way, Isaac Wilson did play. You know, I thought that second half he looked really good, but the, when he did miss, he Oof. sailed it. He sailed that, it. And that interception was real yeah. bad. It was brutal. He, he yeah. and he almost had another interception in the first half where where he was just late on his read. And it's, that's what I mean. Mm. We we still have to remember that he is a true freshman, and and you're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna win this league without without Cam Rising. So you know that he's serviceable. And that he could, you know, maybe you know, fill in, but you just got to get Cam Rising back. And I think, you know, we talk about what's coming back next week. Uh, Kyle said afterwards, I believe I didn't hear his press conference. I was just looking on Twitter that he thinks Cam will be back next week. Yeah, is that what he said? Yep. So that's that's good news. I think uh, I also think Spencer Petrus was very close to coming back for Utah State too. Um, and, uh, in fact, there were a couple of moments where he was warming up on the sideline, just trying to stay ready if they needed him. Uh, but I would anticipate mm. that Spencer Petrus will be your starting quarterback against Temple next week. For, okay. Uh, so for, it, th- that start will just be given back to him? Yeah. Or, or did Bryson Barnes not play well enough with 223 uh, and 36 rushing? Or No. I mean, I don't think so. I think Barnes is a good backup. Spencer Petrus is the better of the two, in my opinion. Oh. Um, you okay. know, Barnes – Barnes makes some really good throws, but but when he really needs to push the ball down the field, um, there's yeah. some there's some accuracy issues there, and we we all saw it. I mean, we've seen enough Bryson Barnes. We know yeah, that we know that his shortcomings. Mm-hmm. And Utah State wasn't really able to stretch the field as much as they'd like because Barnes just, from an accuracy standpoint, just can't really, especially on that go route, really kind of struggles a bit on that throw. And he and by the way. 
I, I obviously I'm loving up Bryson Barnes more than you are, but <laughs> I thought I mean he threw some good balls. Like I, he had some good balls, but then but we know Bryce. You're right. We know Bryson Barnes. Like we he makes some like he'll make some you'll he'll make these these throws like he, him and him and him and uh, Otto Tia had a they had a couple nice uh, pitch and catches where I mean he made some beautiful throws, but then like that one where he just overthrew uh, or underthrew Tia. And and then it was it was like would have I mean, been a touchdown. Yeah, he probably re- he really should have had three interceptions. To be honest with you, on that first drive, I think it was. Uh, I want to say it was Zamaya Vaughn that that missed one. One went right through his hands, and yep. uh-huh. and so he probably should have had three interceptions. But the, the one thing that Bryson Barnes gives you that maybe Peters doesn't is is the uh, is the elusiveness and and the ability to possibly run. Yeah. So. Let's uh, – fun game. Uh, it was certainly entertaining. Uh, by the way, Utah fans – How was the crowd? That's what, exactly what I was going to say. Utah fans made that drive. There was a ton of red in that stadium. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it was uh, – and you, the student section at Utah State was great. Uh, it was it was a really fun atmosphere. That stadium was, was rocking. It, but, I mean, to, truth be told, it kind of felt like a neutral site game when you got half and half. And uh, – and I mean, it was Utah fans gobbled up those tickets, and I think the frugal nature of Cash Valley. I think uh, there were some Aggie fans that were more than happy to sell their tickets to Utah fans. So, oh. um, <laughs> were you surprised by that, Scotty? Because I, from I was, what I saw on the camera, I was like, "Wow, that looks like there is a lot of red in there." I was, I was a li- I was very surprised. Yeah, I uh, the, the back of that one end zone. I'm not sure oh, yeah. what side it was. I that's was like, south, "That's all red." That south end zone was all red. It was all red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, the, fr- the frugal nature <laughs> of cash. <laughs> Looking for that cash in cash. Yeah. <laughs> Man. I'm... Uh, oh, but, that's funny. But I had uh, Diana Sabo. She joins us every pregame show um, for a weekly chat. And uh, and she said, I mean, she didn't mince any words. She said that, hey, um, we didn't get an invite into the pack six. Um, we weren't one of those initial invites because um, we don't win at a high level in football, which, uh, okay, and neither does Colorado State and neither does San Diego State. I mean, the Aggies have a better track record of football wins than those those schools do, um, and, and even better than Fresno. Boise, obviously, it wins and wins at a high level. But, um, but then she goes, and then they also told us we don't put enough butts in the seats. And... You know, they want when they when they go to market with this TV deal, they want to be able to show good crowd shots. And Utah State's got to be better. Fans need to be better. Um, they had only I think seventeen five for their game against Robert Morris, and it shouldn't matter if it's Robert Morris. It shouldn't matter if it's Utah. You need to be getting your butt and sitting in those stands and supporting your team. And if you're not, then you can't complain that you're not part of the Pack Six or the Pack Eight or the Ten or Twelve, whatever they end up settling on. Um, you know, you, you know that's a big part of it, and people pay attention to that stuff. And they look at donor base, and Utah State's bottom third in terms of uh, donor donations in the Mountain West Conference. And I think everybody thinks, oh, Jim Lobb will pay for it. Jim Lobb's got this. Well, guess what? You know what? Everybody's got to step up. Everybody needs to – Donate and look. I'm not telling you how to spend your money. If you don't want to donate, you don't have to donate. If you're an Aggie fan, you do you do you. But don't come complaining about well, we're, you know, we got left out and why are we not being a part of this conversation? Because there's there's reasons, um, and it's not mm-hmm. just because Logan's hard to get to. Um, you know, look, Washington State's not easy to get to. Oregon State's not easy to get to. Um, but uh, but yet. They're going to be all right, and uh, Utah State might be on the outside looking in. In fact, they squarely are on the outside looking in right now. And if you can't show up for, for by the way, for U- number 12 Utah, like that's a big-time game. Who doesn't want to go see? And the thing is, you, the, Utah State came out and punched Utah in the mouth right out of the gates. I mean, they're up 14-3, mm-hmm. and that's an atmosphere that that, that you I, would, I have to imagine Utah Aggies fans want to be a part of. I mean – you get you get a team like this that comes into your into your you know into your stadium and and you don't that's you know that's a bummer yeah. I, I I know you know what the Aggies show up for basketball they they do a great job of fill, of filling up 
Um, and when you have a team like this that comes in, you got to you got to show up and rep. Speaking of teams that were left out, that was the transition. <laughs> I was going to let you just run with it. Um, <laughs> And Boy, speaking really of a team that's not there. very good, <laughs> oh man, how Guys. bad was how bad was it yesterday? It, it's bad. Wyoming's bad. That, <gasps> they, that is some of the worst football I've seen in a long time. Evans Faboda, their quarterback, they need to change him out. I don't know what they have behind him, but they need to change him out. His completion percentage is in the dumpster, and he is inaccurate and he is out of control and he's got heart but what he is is he's a poor man's bryson barnes believe it or not like that's what he is i I cannot believe how wildly inaccurate he is and i felt like byu took advantage of it i thought that their defense was spectacular again you know they're doing such a good job of clamping down receivers and running a lot of different man looks and (laughs) Evan Johnson has come in, and he is playing some great football at the corner position. He gets an interception. That's four straight games now where BYU has been able to pull down an interception. So Gennaro Guilford, his corners are playing lights out. They didn't even try to throw towards Jacob Robinson. They were like, wherever number zero is, just make sure you don't throw it there. And BYU's passing defense just shut down Svoboda. So then you go to the run game, and – BYU is rotating in a couple of new big boys. I love this Luke Tuomalatai. He is a big, space-eating defensive tackle. He he looks more like a Utah D tackle than he does a BYU D tackle, believe it or not. And because you know, over the years BYU's had these six foot, maybe six one, six two at the most D tackles that they're trying to get in into the gaps with some size, and it just doesn't work. And you've got Luke, who is a 6'5", 6'6", 330, 340-pound guy that's actually holding the point of attack, which you got to have him for Big 12 play. So, And then they moved Blake Mangelson inside, and Blake has been playing a great one and three technique. He's getting some pushback, and he's firing off the ball, and he's he's got a nice heavy anchor. But it's against Wyoming, and – as we talked about through the week, Wyoming's just a bad football team. They have got to figure out a lot of things, Scotty. I'm telling you, Lloyd, right now that that I know that Aaron Bowl is the son of Craig Bowl, but his defense is vanilla and too predictable. And then Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator, he he's coordinated, he's coached at Georgia, he's coached at Colorado. He was the offensive coordinator for Michigan State last year and, and for the last few years. This offense, it is horrible. There is yep. there is no level of it that you would worry about or fight against, or it it's just hard to believe how bad Wyoming is. You are you all right, buddy? Oh, I thought my mic was off. Sorry. No, it's been on. We were listening. Wow. I thought I, thought I had my mic turned off. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's been on. It's actually threw me off. I was I was worried about you for a minute. I'm worried oh, about me. I love the morning after podcast. Oh, man, I love the morning after podcast so much. It is <laughs> really raw. I love it. So is Scotty's throat. Oh, like, no doubt. Uh, I was actually in the process of texting him. I was like, hey, are you okay? <laughs> wow sorry about that you're good well, buddy so yes that offense yeah, no, uh, is is not good um i caught oh the, it's uh, bad i caught the uh after doing the post game show uh i think i got back and i was able to catch like uh from the second quarter on roughly and and yeah that often svoboda is yeah he is not good and i i was surprised and i i don't know i don't know how what as far as well, your thoughts on him, but they—I mean—they only got—they only got to him once. He, he seemed like he was pretty elusive, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. He's I was a big guy. They only got one sack, and yeah, he is big. He's—he's he's much bigger than he's kind of what closer to maybe a little bit closer to what Bryson was last year, possibly because I know Bryson slimmed down just a little bit. I mean, actually, he's probably bigger than what Bryson was, but but yeah, I was surprised they only got one sack on him. Yeah, he's a big guy. They pressured him enough, though. Um, he was really pushed and forced around, so 
I thought that uh, they pressured him well. They were in his face. Um, yeah, I'd have liked to have seen more than one sack, but I thought they did a lot of things nice defensively. Well, I, I, I mean, I think that BYU didn't need to show a lot either uh, right. just because they were so good. And, and frankly, um, you know, when you know you have the game out of reach and, and you know there's no way that they're going to come back and, and challenge you in any way, shape, or form, uh, you know, you don't need to be too overly aggressive. You don't need to do too much. You just go do your thing and uh, wrap this thing up and get the heck out of Laramie with a win, which they did. I mean, there's there's no need for style points or anything like that. Just go to Laramie, get a win, and then never go back. And yeah. I still don't know why that game was on the schedule. Yeah, me neither. And, and you're right, any, don't ever go back there. Any, uh, I guess, I mean, Utah or BYU, their leading rusher uh, was, was Retzloff. Uh, for 62 yards, and and obviously they're you know they're they're banged up on the on the running, as far as the running back yeah. game. But he he looked really good through the air. Like I he know did. it's Wyoming, but he he actually he threw some really good ball. I mean, he had three touchdowns. Um, he looked solid. He looked good. Much more comfortable. He did. He did. I, I'll give it to him. He looked really good. And as you mentioned, leading rusher had 62 yards. They used him a lot in the running game. And guys, he had a 40 yard run that was called back off of. A bogus holding call. Tavatase just flattened a guy, pancaked the dude, it, like maybe eight or ten yard depth, and they threw the holding call on the pancake. Wow. The dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. He took the guy straight down on his back and Retzloff scampers out of there. So Retzloff would have been over 100 yards rushing if they didn't call that back. Which is a good thing, and it's a bad yeah, thing. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is, is, that, you know. is that something you really want to be, you know, that, that BYU wants to be excited about? No, I don't think necessarily it is. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into that situation where your quarterback is having to be your leading rusher every week. And I, look, I really like Pokai Honga. He came in. They were talking about potentially pulling the red shirt off of him, and he came in, and I thought he was spectacular. So five carries for 35 yards and had some great moments. Um, Sione Moa was the other running back that I thought looked okay at times. But here's the problem. You got Miles Davis, who you've been kind of waiting on and hoping for for the last five seasons, and it's just not working. And I said going into this game, guys, I said, if you give the ball and the start and the carries to Miles Davis and you're not getting the production, then – it's just time to move on because it's five years of trying and giving him shots and then it sputters and he doesn't show this breakaway or this bulk carry ability and you got to find that so i i think it's time to move on a little bit go to polka go to sione if lj gets back go to lj if hinkley goes back gets back go to hinkley but i thought that polka hung out of all the running backs that showed last night probably showed me the most. Hey, uh, I, on that uh, kickoff return for a score, uh, I was watching that earlier this morning, and who was the guy that made the nasty block at, like, the five-yard line? Was it Sionu Moa? I saw it was number 30, and I don't know if, yeah. you know, sometimes – was it Moa? It was, yeah. Okay, because I know Miles Hall – is a linebacker, and sometimes you get these guys that you know that are young that you put on special teams. But it was Sione Moa who just flattened a dude to allow that that uh, uh, that I can't. I, I now I'm spacing who it was. It was Keelan. Okay, Keelan Marion to uh, score mm-hmm. that touchdown. And uh, but but that block was just filthy, setting that thing yeah. up at the five yard line to make sure he got into the end zone. First return for a touchdown in ten years. Wow, that is that. Is that crazy? It's the first 100-yard return touchdown since 1996, James Dye. BYU has not had a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown since 1996. Hans Olsen's red shirt. No, you were still in high school in 96. Wow. No, that was my – Was that your red shirt year? Yeah, that was my my red shirt freshman year. Okay. Wow. My red shirt year. Right. Your your red shirt year, yeah. Yep. Yep. But – it doesn't come around that often, and it was it was great. But I also think that it's Wyoming. I, guys, yeah. that is a bad football team. Bad football team. They are 
undisciplined. They are unmotivated. They ha- they don't have a quarterback that can get anything done if he needs to. I, f- I feel terrible for him. So I feel good about BYU like I, I do. I- I'm more encouraged about this 3-0 and team than last year's 3-0 and team. But there are still things that I am curious about. I just – I want to see it against Kansas State, and I need to see if they really are who we think they are. But I do feel better about this team because the defense is so much better. I I don't th- remember last year, guys. Jay Hill's defense started out on fire. They had the shutout against Sam Houston, and through three games, they were great. Remember coming out of Game Three against oh, Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. You remember they had the sacks on those final possessions and force K.J. Jefferson into some bad decisions, and they get that Arkansas win for their third win. And I remember I was reflecting back on it on the drive back from Laramie. I'm like, geez, I was pretty high on that team for a minute. And then they couldn't sneak out three wins through the remainder of the season. Well, I feel really good about this defense. Like, I feel like it's more sure, it's more sound with Jack Kelly and Blake Mangelson and Jacob Robinson and Tyler Batty. I feel like it's more shored up than that defense was last year. But, but there's this weird hesitancy because of what happened last year, how well, it all just when, when fell When you apart. go to the Big, big 12, uh, you, uh, and those offenses are going to show your defense's warts. Like the, yeah. Those de- and that's that's what happened last year, and no. So I, I'm, hands, I'm actually right there with you. I'm thinking, okay, they they feel better, they look better, they're passing the eye test, you know. Yeah. And so, but it's like there is a, a little bit hesitant. It's like okay, but now let's see because we just saw what what Kansas State did to Arizona. Uh, did to Arizona. Yeah, they right. took them back. Now you get Matt Wells shit. and you you get Matt Wells and Avery Johnson. Like right. like Scotty Matt Wells is he's okay. putting together. A hate package for BYU. Yep. <laughs> uh, and look, yep. That, this team is – this Kansas State team's averaging, you know, nearly 36 points a game and only giving up 13. And so not only are they scoring points, um, but they're holding opponents. And look, you hold Arizona to seven points. I know Tulane got them for a little bit, but that was at Tulane, but they still won that game. Uh, but they're coming to BYU, and they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. And uh, they've had, uh, and they'll have an extra day of preparation, um, you know. And so, those guys were uh, sitting around watching games yesterday, and just, you know, sitting in front of their TV watching BYU play, and saying, "All right, we don't, we got plenty of time to prep for these guys." And so they're going to come in highly, highly motivated. All right, what else we got? Anything else cracking? Well, the big. The Big 12 was wild, fellas. Yep. Yeah, it was wild. It was. Colorado goes and whoops Colorado State after looking bad to start. They go and whoop Colorado State. Hey, so, can Colorado, Colorado State, play, State players just shut their mouths? Just shut up. Yeah. I mean, they what came they out say? Oh, they came out this week and, and said, uh, essentially, Instagram followers doesn't lead to wins. They were back chirping again, the receiver and the, and the quarterback again. Um, and so I'm just like, dude, stop! And then you go out and throw uh, throw out a, a goose egg. Like, come on, knock it off. Yeah. Did you did you see the the press conference by the way? No, with, uh, no. Shador. Oh man, no. he came out. So he uh, he came out, and of course, obviously, he took the heat throwing his offensive line under the bus, right? Well, he came out. Him and Travis Hunter came out with the, the press conference and. The offensive linemen were were standing behind them. Oh, jeez! <laughs> and and essentially, he said that the media twisted up his words. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! The, the the show doesn't stop there, man. It does not. It yeah, is. We, yeah, it is the gift that we, keeps on giving. We twisted up how he said. How many times did the opposing quarterback get hit? Yeah, yeah. we twisted that. Yeah, up. that that was us. Uh, that Central Florida TCU game was just crazy. And uh, TCU um, gives up, what, a 21-point lead to Central Florida? They, they did. Yeah. And, and, yeah, TCU uh, was up 21 to nothing at, at the back end of the second uh, second quarter. And end up losing that 35-34. You're right. Maybe Central Florida is the team that is the uh, comes out of nowhere West Virginia of this season. 
Well, R.J. Harvey got 180 yards rushing and two touchdowns, and then K.J. Jefferson had nine carries for 46 yards, but went for 230 yards through the air for three touchdowns. So Gus Malzahn is figuring things out with Jefferson and R.J. Harvey. Now, this is the bad news. Both BYU and Utah see them later, yeah. which I, I think you'd want to get them early if you can, un- unless there's some injury or some wear down, because I think the more time that Jefferson and Harvey have with Malzahn, the more deadly that team could possibly be. And they've got a receiver that is an absolute stud. I can't remember his name. I think his first name's Kobe, but he is an absolute stud. I saw a highlight package of this game, and there were a couple of big-time catches by that kid. Mm. So they uh, – oh, I, you, you, you just can't – remember, we kind of felt like, oh, Central Florida, that'll be a win. Not, not, not as we're getting closer to the CC, maybe pre-Big 12 media day. Yeah. It was, yeah, Central Florida. That should be a win for both BYU and Utah. But now them and TCU. TCU looks tough. Josh Hoover is – he may be leading the Big 12 in passing yards. He's up there. Jeez. Yep. It's a problem. And you know you know, Gus was going to get it going, too. Um, he, he's, he's a heck of a coach, but holy smokes. We talked about Kansas State obviously thumping Arizona. How about Kansas losing to UNLV? Hey, I that was a game. That was a I, fun game. I keep telling everybody UNLV is the best team in the Mountain West Conference, and I don't know if it's particularly close. Actually, really, yeah, they looked I mean, good. They were really good. I mean, and and, and that uh, defense, that defense is phenomenal. That's what that's the team I picked uh, when I had my preseason poll with the conference. I picked UNLV to win the conference because they are just lights out and they were all over Jalen Daniels yep so they get that what makes them good? uh they're just loaded with athletes loaded with athletes and now they get As they, they should be and now they've got uh the uh who's the uh MMA guys that were, were in bed with uh, Dana White Fertitas yeah the Fertitas are just pouring money into that program oh boy oh, Dude, J- oh Jalen boy. Daniels was 12 of 24 for 153 yards two interceptions not yeah. a single touchdown. So they, they they're they're now fully invested in the NIL world uh, in football. They've been there for basketball for a while, even though they haven't seen the dividends pay off for that. But uh, in football, look, they've got an NFL stadium. They get to uh, they get to uh, you know show off, and it's Vegas, and now they've got NIL money. There's they're 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 bringing in the recruits, and these kids are playing well. People have been calling them the sleeping giants for a while. Like they, there's, I think they, they're they're waking up. Yeah. Well, and and credit to them too. They've realized, like Colorado State did. Colorado State is still leveraged to the hilt with all the facilities that they built with a brand new stadium and everything. Uh, but they realize, hey, the world of college athletics is changing. So if it means we're in crippling debt, we're going to have to do it to make sure that we're in a position to make the jump to the next level. And they had big aspirations. And while there's a little bit of pain involved in trying to service all that debt, they it worked out for them. And, look, I don't know how much more money they're going to make as opposed to where they're at in the Mountain West right now. I don't think it'll be significantly more. Uh, but it gets you a little bit more of a seat at the table and uh, gets you a little bit more recognized. And then when the, another reshuffling happens in another three or four years, who knows where you're going to be at at that point. So, um UNLV is doing the same thing. Colorado State obviously did the same thing. San Diego State went all in on a new stadium. Um, and so there are teams that are saying, hey, look, if we have to mortgage our future a little bit, we're going to do it just to make sure that we have opportunities down the line. And for those schools, because I think UNLV is a no-brainer. They'll end up in that pack six. They just had to work out some – they've got to work out some issues because they've got some legislature issues that try to tie them to Nevada. And obviously, nobody wants Nevada in that conference. And so um, they've got to find a way to separate themselves from Nevada. And that's just going to take a little bit of time. They'll get it done. And, and then at that point, UNLV will be in that conference with those other Mountain West schools. I think, I think Air Force will be in there, too, uh, I guess. The word is Air Force to the AAC. Um, uh-huh. Because then they can be with Navy and Army in the same conference. And so you can have all three of those service academies in the same conference. 
So that's the rumor on Air Force right now. But I agree, if that doesn't happen to the AAC, I think that they're a, a good spot there as well because everybody loves to be able to say, oh, look, we're patriotic. We have Air Force in our conference. And it's a cool place to go, for sure. It's a, it's a fun place to call a game. They're like the, the Lee Greenwood of, of teams. Yep, yep. <laughs> we don't want to play it, but we feel like we have to play it. <laughs> Oh, is, is uh never change. last thing is <laughs> is uh so Utah's still cream of the crop Big Twelve, and then is it go Oklahoma State? Is that who you feel the second most confidence in? Probably, and then maybe Kansas State, and maybe Kansas State. Yeah, Kansas State's right start- there. We're starting to see it shape up a little bit, um, but I will say for BYU's sake, Kansas becomes a, a more winnable game. Arizona potentially becomes a more winnable game. Um, Baylor beat up Air Force pretty well. And, Lloyd, you got kind of an up-close and better look at Baylor as Utah took them on. So I don't know if you feel like that's a winnable game. but Yeah, I, I think that one is a winnable game. I do. Uh, this conference is yeah. going to be a blast. Yeah, it It's going to be a fun conference season, man. All right, that wraps it up for us. It's your morning after podcast. Hans Olsen, Scott Gerard, Lloyd Cole, thanks for making us part of your Sunday morning. Uh, please, please, please uh, give us a rating. Give us a review. I apologize for the coughing fit in the middle of it. That was my bad. That doesn't happen every week. <laughs> Come for the b- football breakdown. Stay for the for Stay the for Scott almost dying in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, man. I, no, I thought, hey. I thought I had my mic turned off. Hey, Scotty, for, just for the morning after story really quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Give it to us. Dude, that press box is disgusting. I knew it. <laughs> it is Cockroaches. disgusting. It, that ain't a press box. That's a bunch of termites holding hands. That yep. is <laughs> one of the most ancient, run down. Like the, the boards creak under your feet while yep. you're walking. It's got this. It's got that same linoleum top yep. on the the counter that's all cracked and jagged. So you're cutting your arms while you're sitting at your desk trying to write some notes. Uh, the they served cardboard pizza. Yep, I told you. Yeah, you you nailed it. Nothing has changed. There's one bathroom. Yep. For the entire press box, and it's. Not one that you walk into and, and share. It's a solo it's bathroom a single. that you walk yep. in. Yeah, it's a single. You walk in, you lock it, and you've got a toilet that is open air next to the urinal. And that line was 25 deep. <laughs> People trying to get in there. The elevator, it took us 12 minutes to get up the elevator. It, it's like, I cannot believe it. The, Look, the, BYU. The, the, BYU never should have scheduled this game, and they never should ever even remotely think about going back to Laramie. But deep down, I am so glad you got to experience. I love it when you get to experience <laughs> what I go through sometimes. And so, I like deep down, I'm just it. like when you're when you're talking, I'm just like, yep, check, 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 and check. I love it, man. Oh man, this makes me so happy. I, I just as it's, so what's crazy as you're walking out of the press box, they have a person there that's administering tetanus shots yeah because they're like <laughs> it's just best that that we double check this and and i'm like i just had mine uh let's do another yeah. one uh, there's there's strains here in laramie that might fight <laughs> off a normal tetanus shot <laughs> is there no like big time rancher money like donors that are come on where are those no, guys where's man. the uh where's the duttons where are I, they at i don't know out of the, an the, abundance of caution we feel like this shot is necessary for you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the morning after Scotty we need. <laughs> the, 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 the one that I'll just roll with. Uh, yeah, Lloyd, the Jay Novacek's of the world aren't hustling back here to get back to the program. <laughs> Where are they? It's, <laughs> the only thing that – Did you the say only Taylor, thing that, that, What's that? Did you say where's Taylor Sheridan? Is that what you 
I said the Duttons. I know that's Montana. Oh, the Duttons. Where, the Duttons. Where's the Duttons? Where are they? <laughs> yeah, they're pouring their money into Montana and Montana State, who I guarantee have much better facilities than Wyoming. The only thing that stadium has that's cool is the name, War Memorial. It, it, it is a gr- that is an absolutely great name and a bit intimidating, along with the 7,220-foot elevation. They could do a better job with that stadium. I – I think it can be an intimidating, tough place to play, but it's going to take about six hundred and eighty million <laughs> to to get it up to that point where you, you know, you, which means it's a full demolition and a full rebuild yeah. because it is. Well, the hazmat money is, you got to put in to, when you take that thing down, like you got to have asbestos, right? Well, well they didn't asbestos. have a lot of COVID. Oh. They didn't have a lot of COVID cases because even COVID didn't want to go there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. COVID's waiting. COVID was sitting there waiting in line behind all kinds of cancers and <laughs> diphtheria. And, like, COVID's like, we'll wait. Yeah. We'll wait. Cholera, go ahead. Take our seat. It's fine. Go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, oh man. man. Good stuff. All right, gentlemen. Have a good Sunday. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Leave your rating. Leave your uh, review. Uh, Be kind. We have uh, sensitive feelings. And uh, tell a friend. We need some downloads on this thing. We do this for free. Nobody's paying us. And and so, and by the way, if you're a business owner out there, you want to sponsor the morning after, get in contact with us. And we'll we'll make sure you get taken care of because you're getting a lot of, a lot of listens. Okay. Maybe not a lot, but, but you're getting listens. Hans and Scotty, Lloyd Cole, it's your morning after podcast. This is 97.5 EKSL Sports Zone. This has been your morning after podcast with Hans, Scotty, and Lloyd Cole. Catch more of the Hans and Scotty Show weekdays from noon to 3 and in podcast form by searching Hans and Scotty on your podcasting platform of choice. This is 97.5 the KSL Sports Zone.